Three ways to clean the oxygen sensor using household items like lemon, vinegar, and even petrol. So really, should you clean your oxygen sensor? Do they work and are they even safe? Let's find out. If you look online, you'll find dozens of videos showing exactly how these items are used to clean the O2 sensor. But here's the problem. A lot of these video clips leave out crucial safety steps. And that can mean the difference between a sensor that works and one that dies in days. And considering replacement sensors can cost anywhere from $100 to $300, it's no wonder people try these home methods, but the wrong approach can render the sensor useless. Remember, this isn't just a plug. Inside is a tiny porous ceramic tip that breathes exhaust gases and compares them to outside air to create a voltage signal your engine uses to adjust fuel. It's delicate and contamination ruins that precision. This is why it's so sensitive to contamination, which is key to everything we're about to discuss in this video. And we are looking at the three most popular DIY oxygen cleaning methods using household items, especially lemon juice, vinegar, and even petrol. I will be explaining what they do right, what they don't tell you, and how to make each one safer. Plus, I'll show you the fix I recommend. Method one, the lemon juice method. All right, lemon juice. I get why people try this. Lemon contains citric acid and citric acid is good at breaking down some types of surface carbon. It's mild, non-toxic, and it's something most people already have at home. But here's what these videos don't tell you. Lemon juice also contains sugars and organic compounds. When you heat the sensor back up in your exhaust stream, those can burn onto the sensing element and create a thin, insulating layer. That layer can throw off your readings, meaning your engine might think it's running rich or lean when it's not. Another issue? They often dunk the entire sensor. You don't want lemon juice or any liquid inside the electrical connector. That's a fast track to corrosion. If you really want to try lemon juice because it's all you've got, only submerge the sensor tip. Keep the connector completely dry. Limit soak time to 5 to 10 minutes. After soaking, rinse the tip in distilled water. Never tap water, which can leave behind mineral deposits like calcium and lime that will foul the sensor all over again and let it air dry. Let the sensor air dry fully, ideally overnight, before reinstalling. Also, please note that if your lemon juice turns dark during soaking, that's carbon lifting off, but it also means the acid is working aggressively. So cut your soak time short to avoid damaging the protective layer. And remember, this is for light deposits only. It won't fix a sensor with a failing heater circuit or physical damage. Better alternative for the same goal. For roughly the same cost, you can grab a can of carb or throttle body cleaner. These are designed to dissolve carbon without leaving sugar or organic residue. Spray it, wipe it, let it dry, no overnight soaking needed. The reason lemon juice sometimes works is because many O2 sensor problems aren't electrical, they're chemical. Carbon and fuel residue block the porous ceramic, slowing response time. Acidic solutions can help dissolve that, but if the acid isn't controlled, you damage the protective layer instead. Method 2. The use of vinegar. Next up, vinegar. This is acetic acid, stronger than lemon juice. You'll actually see it fizz on certain deposits, and that's satisfying to watch, but also a bit worrying. For context, vinegar usually has a pH around 2.5, compared to lemon juice at roughly 3. That slight difference makes it more aggressive on delicate coatings. That bubbling means it's reacting with something. Sometimes it's carbon deposits, but other times it's reacting with mineral contaminants or even the sensor's protective layer, like the sensor's porous ceramic or platinum coating that most of these sensors are designed with. So fizzing isn't always a good sign. Long soaks can strip away the coating that keeps contaminants from damaging the sensing element. What they don't tell you. Many vinegar cleaning videos recommend overnight soaks. That's way too long for a precision part like this. Even 30 minutes can start to pit the surface. Also, vinegar smell isn't just unpleasant. Those fumes can cause headaches in enclosed spaces. And again, connectors and wiring should never be submerged. If you must try vinegar, use a shallow dish so you only cover the sensor tip. Soak for no more than five minutes. Rinse with distilled water and dry completely. Avoid scrubbing with anything abrasive. It can scratch the sensing surface. A safer bet is using a catalytic converter and O2 sensor cleaner, which costs only about $10 and then you add it to your fuel tank. These work by cleaning under actual operating temperatures, which helps maintain the protective coatings that prevent future fouling. The cleaners heat up with the exhaust and burn away dirty and carbon buildup and deposits internally without soaking the sensor outside the car. Tip, meaning a mild commercial sensor cleaner would have been safer and just as effective. And method three, petrol method. This is the one that makes me want to hit the brakes. Yes, petrol is a strong solvent. 
Yes, it will dissolve oil, grease, and some carbon. But it's also extremely flammable, toxic to breathe, and dangerous to handle in open containers. Petrol vapors are heavier than air. They can collect around you without you realizing, which means it can ignite from a spark or static discharge even in relatively cool conditions. Something safe cleaners are specifically formulated to avoid. One spark, even from a static discharge, and you've got a serious fire hazard. What they don't tell you. Most videos don't mention that petrol can break down the silicone and rubber seals in the sensor body. It can also leave behind a thin, oily residue. That oily film is like a magnet for fresh carbon, which can make the sensor foul again within days instead of months. Frankly, I wouldn't recommend this at all, but if someone insisted, work outdoors, far from ignition sources. Use a minimal amount, don't submerge the connector. Limit contact to under a minute. Rinse with isopropyl alcohol afterwards, remove residue and help it dry faster. Better alternative. A spray can of MAF sensor cleaner is safer, cheaper, and leaves no residue. These are non-flammable when sprayed and evaporate quickly. Also, anytime you're cleaning a part that controls your fuel air mix, you want zero residues left behind. Petrol leaves residue. Purpose-made cleaners don't. So here's my take on this. Lemon juice, safe-ish if done carefully, but not ideal. Vinegar, more risk to the sensor coating. Petrol, high fire hazard, and residue risk. If your O2 sensor is old and heavily fouled, cleaning may buy you a few weeks or months, but it won't restore it to new condition. For long-term reliability, a replacement is usually best. Most oxygen sensors are designed to last 60,000 to 100,000 miles. So if you've driven your car that long, just plan to replace it. Because once the sensing element is worn or contaminated internally, cleaning will only buy you time. It won't restore original performance. Safer cleaning options? MAF Sensor Cleaner Spray, designed for sensitive electronics and coatings and best for off-car cleaning when you need to spray and dissolve deposits directly. Remember to always go for 90% plus isopropyl alcohol or purpose-made cleaners when you need to displace moisture or dissolve residue quickly. Catalytic Converter, Cleaner Additives, Clean the sensor while it's in use and are best for on-car cleaning to remove light deposits while you drive without removing any parts. Regular maintenance, avoid fuel additives that create heavy deposits, keep your engine tuned, and fix oil leaks early. So lemon and vinegar can sometimes clean light deposits if you do it carefully. Petrol? I can't recommend it. And no matter which method you choose, you need to rinse and dry properly, something most videos skip. Now, if you want a safer way of cleaning your oxygen sensor without even removing and it is very effective, watch our other video linked in the description and in the card here on the two ways to clean O2 sensor without removal. Back to you, I'd love to know, would you ever clean an oxygen sensor with any of these household items or would you stick to proper cleaners? Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.